Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring William Bendix with Rosemary DeCamp, Richard Long, and Meg Randall in The Life of Riley. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. During the so-called good old days of the theater, plays sometimes ran for years, and actors were often completely identified with one role for most of their lives. The same is more or less true today in radio, and particularly so with that clever and lovable comedian, William Bendix, who has become identified with one Mr. Riley, just as lovable, uh, but not as clever. Tonight's play, The Life of Riley, was based on the famous radio series, and the Irving Brecker production for Universal International Studio was a great screen hit. In addition to Bill Bendix, we have Rosemary DeCamp, Richard Long, and Meg Randall, all from the original screencast. I know you'll be interested to hear that another of our Lux girls has won new honors. I'm sure you remember Jackie Lee Barnes, the winner of the national contest for the most beautiful 15-year-old Lux girl. In the June issue of Modern Screen Magazine, she's been selected as America's most promising teenage beauty. And so, once again, our congratulations go to that lovely Lux girl, Jackie Lee Barnes of Albuquerque. Now, here's The Life of Riley, starring William Bendix as Riley, Rosemary DeCamp as Peg, Richard Long as Jeff, and Meg Randall as Babs, with John Brown as Digger Odell. There's no doubt about it, America's the land of miracles, where dreams come true. Take that penniless farmer, Reuben Shipp, He discovered gold while plowing his field. Today, he's living the life of Riley. Or the starving Indian who drove a tent stake into the ground and struck oil. Today, he's living the life of Riley. And this is the story of Chester A. Riley, who is just living. You see what I mean, Riley? If you had money, we wouldn't have to walk home from work. You could be driving me home in a swell car. Hey, you worry too much about money, Gillis. Money don't bring happiness. How would you know? You ain't never had none. Now take our boss, for instance. Yeah, Mr. Stevenson's okay, but I'd rather be just a riveter. If you're a big executive and you got a million bucks and houses and cars and a yacht and you croak, look at all the pleasure you're giving up. With us, we don't lose nothing. <laughs> okay, money's bad. I hate it. But what are you going to tell your wife when you get home with only five bucks in your pay envelope? My wife never dares to question me about money. Ha! Besides, my peg knows I'm doing the best I can with the brains I got. <laughs> oh, she respects you, huh? My family looks up at me like I was a king. My home is my castle. Well, so long, your majesty. So long, Gillis. See you back in the shop on Monday. Hiya, subjects. Oh, hiya, Pop. Hello, Daddy. Well, they remember me. Riley, dear, you're home. Yeah. You tired, dear? Yeah, but it's sure great to be home where nobody nags at you. Hey, Pop, the landlady's looking for you. Hmm? Miss Bogle, the landlady. No. You gave Miss Bogle a July rent, didn't you, Riley? Well, sure I did, Dumplin'. I paid the July rent last week. It's June she's after. Huh? I mean, uh... But you got paid today at the plant. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, then go on out and... Riley, uh-huh. where's your pay envelope? Oh, well, here it is, honey. There. No, 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 Peg. Don't look in there. It's practically naked. Five dollars. Now, don't get excited, Peg. I can explain everything. I'm listening. Well, it's like this. You see that kid over there, you know, Junior? I've met the boy. Well, uh, (laughs) the the braces for his teeth. But you paid for that, thirty dollars. Yeah, but there was the the balance, fifty (laughs) dollars. Here's the receipt. Balance? You didn't tell me about any balance. Well, I I didn't know, Peg. I I, I signed a contract that I I couldn't read the fine print. I... Peg, I need glasses. You need something. Five dollars. How am I going to run the house next week? And what about the electric bill? You know they threatened to turn off our lights. Well, we'll make out somehow. Gee, you ought to be happy now that we own Junior outright. (laughs) Smile, Junior. (laughs) Oh, Riley, if you'd only let me handle the money. You handled the money. A female woman handling the finances in my own house. Oh, what's the use? Well, I'll leave it to you kids. 
I bring home the pay envelope. Who ought to handle the money? Your mother or me? Mom. Who asked you? <laughs> Go wash your hands. Work and slave for what? Nobody appreciates it. Oh, of course we do, Daddy. It's not your fault you're caught in this trap. You're just an innocent victim of marriage. I am? Yes. To quote Professor Lipscott, why the average husband and father is an economic slave to family obligations. Now, if you'd stayed single, you might have had a wonderful career, like I'm going to have. Fine career you'd have if I'd have stayed single. <laughs> Sydney, who? I can't believe it's you, Sydney. It's been over ten years. Sydney Monahan from Brooklyn? <laughs> yeah, isn't it wonderful, Riley? Wonderful? That foul ball from Ebbets Field? Uh, hang up, Peg. The, the coffee's boiling over in the kitchen. I'm not making coffee. What did you say, Sydney? Woo! Sydney, you mustn't say such things. I'm an old married woman now. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Riley, I think the coffee's boiling over in the kitchen. You're not making coffee. Daddy, please. Mother's trying to talk. Monahan, that sponger. Never had a quarter to his name. I know. I tried to borrow from him. <laughs> Give me that phone. Huh? Monahan, this is Riley. Yeah, Mr. Peg Riley, see? So why don't you just... <laughs> I stole her away from you. I'm an old horse thief, huh? <laughs> Hold the phone. Peggy just called you a horse. Huh? Well, she married the right guy, Monahan. Yeah, sure, I'm doing all right. I'm knocking them dead, that's all. Yeah, sure, come on out. Come to dinner. Six o'clock, yeah. Yeah, goodbye. You invited Sidney for dinner? You don't even like him. Who don't like him? I despise him. When you see that sponger, you'll realize you didn't make no mistake marrying me. Will you stop raving? Uh, Babs, dear, you better pick some flowers for the table. All right, Mother, but say, who is this Mr. Monaghan? Is he some old flame of yours? Flame? I made a clinker out of him. <laughs> a comedian yet? Junior. Oh, okay, Pop. Okay, I'll wash. Go ahead. Oh, uh, excuse me. I, I, I see you're picking flowers, oh. and I... Well, yes, I am picking flowers. Only uh, you don't seem to have very many to pick. Well, no, I guess I don't. Well, that's, that's why I brought these from next do door. Here, take them. Why, these are Miss Bogle's. Yes, they are, and uh, I'm her nephew. Miss Bogle's nephew from next door? Yes, that's right. I just arrived this morning. My name's Jeff, Jeff Taylor. But, but Miss Bogle is our landlady. Well, maybe the flowers weren't included in the lease, but won't you take them anyway? Well, I certainly hope you enjoy your visit here, Mr. Taylor. Well, I hope so, too. It's going to last four years. Oh. Did you say four years? Yes. Well, well, wouldn't you like to come up and sit for a while on the porch? <laughs> Thanks. You see, I'll be going to college here. Well, I'm going to college, too. Well, I'm pre-med school. Oh, you're going to be a doctor. Well, let's just say I'm going to try to be one. Oh, but that's wonderful. Well, what I mean is... Oh, this is what you're up to, young Stay lady. Stay there, Daddy. I'll be right in. Ah, <laughs> oh, you don't have to worry, Babs. The landlady ain't anywhere in sight. I looked for her. Daddy, so... this is... Well, flowers. Uh, let's have them, honey. Oh, oh, hiya, son. You're new around here, ain't you? Uh, y yes, sir. I... Oh, flowers. That aroma has a wonderful odor. <laughs> I, I, I... I just moved in today. Yeah, Babs has got you hooked already, huh? Daddy... <laughs> Daddy, Mr. Taylor was merely You know, trying... Babs, I like this one's face. Let's keep him for a couple of weeks. <laughs> Father, sometimes you're, you're just impossible. Well, I would just... Well, what do you suppose brought that on? Well, uh, okay, gl glad to have met you, Mr. Riley. Oh, sure, anytime. So, hey, wait a minute. Yes, sir? Don't shortcut through there. If that old witch sees you, she'll... Good evening, Mr. Riley. Miss mm -hmm. Vogel. <laughs> Suppose we have a little talk about the June rent, Mr. Riley. Yes, uh, sure. I, uh, I, uh, oh, I, I was bringing you these flowers, Miss Vogel. <laughs> flowers? Yes. For me? <laughs> oh, Mr. Riley. Oh. <laughs> Yellow chrysanthemum. Yes, they bring out your complexion, oh. Miss Vogel. <laughs> Well, now, about the rent. Oh, but I wouldn't think of having you cancel the rent. Neither would I. <laughs> but I guess there's no hurry. Why, these flowers are even nicer than the ones I... I... Uh, what? <laughs> now, Miss Bogle. You robber. These are my chrysanthemums. You've stolen my flowers. Me? No, I... Uh, my daughter. She's the robber. I was only the fence. <laughs> you keep 
your daughter away from my nephew. As for the rent, I'll give you one more week or else. Yeah, but... Babs! Babs, where are you? Babs, don't you try to hide. I'm not hiding, Father, and I'm not a child, and I won't be embarrassed. You're embarrassed. How do you think I felt getting caught with them hot flowers? <laughs> And that boy, the minute I saw him, I knew he was no good But I never saw him before in my life And who says he's no good? He's the landlady's nephew and that's no good enough for me <laughs> He's a spy from the other side You shouldn't yell at her like that, Riley no. Hey, Mom, Mom, where's my piggy bank? Oh, uh, oh, it's on the mantel, Junior I left it there when I was dusting hey, You just keep your eye on that bank when Monaghan gets here, son <laughs> Sidney is not a thief Okay, but if that dough's missing, this time I didn't take it Holy cow, will you look at that? Look at what? Out in front, a brand new Lincoln convertible. And it's stopping here. A new Lincoln in front of our house? It must have run out of gas. <laughs> Riley! Riley, that's Sidney! Monaghan? Yeah, and the lady's with him. Gosh, how rich is he? Oh, put on your coat, Riley. They're coming in. Oh, oh that was... I tell you, Riley, I just can't figure it out. <laughs> Peggy married to you all these years and just as gorgeous as ever. Okay, mm. okay, Monahan, you kissed her once. Now lay off. Uh, <laughs> oh, excuse me, honey. Uh, folks, meet the bride. Meet Mrs. Monahan. Married you? Oh, that's wonderful. Well, in, in fact, it's our anniversary, Mrs. Riley. A year ago today. Yeah, that's how come the silver mink, Riley. Set me back five grand, but what's money if you're happy? Right, Riley? <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I guess you're doing okay, huh? Oh, me? What about you, Riley? I'm proud of you. Your own little home in California. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's a far cry from those four tiny rooms you had in that dump back in Brooklyn. Uh, yeah, we got five tiny rooms now. <laughs> yeah, glad to see you made good. You know, I bet you got plenty salted away, huh, Riley? Well, yeah, we got a barrel of herring in the cellar. <laughs> Say, what line are you in? Last I heard it was aircraft or something. Yeah, that's right. I started with Stevenson Aircraft ten years ago. Just a riveter. And today I'm still... <laughs> with the firm. Uh, you uh, certainly have two fine children, Junior and Babs. Oh, yeah, Babs is going to college, Mrs. Monaghan. Uh, and she ain't one of them flighty kids, neither. Always dancing and swooning. So... <laughs> Take it easy, Daddy. Well, like I said to her when she started college. Babs, I said, this is a big opportunity you got... So study hard, don't drink, don't smoke, don't neck, but have plenty of fun. <laughs> Charlie's quite the proud father, all right. Yes, and why not? I got more than most, and I never worry. You show me a man who worries, and I'll show you a man who... who... who put out the lights! <laughs> hey, well, what's the matter, Riley? Didn't you pay your bill? Oh, stop kidding, Monaghan. This always happens. That, 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 that company uses cheap electricity. Well, it is so dark in here. Well, sit still, everybody. I'll just light a candle and... But, Riley, that's the only candle in the house, and the stores are all closed by now. How am I going to serve dinner? Yeah, call up the electric company, Riley. Call them? I'll sue them, that's what. If they get away with this, it'll be over my dead body. I knew this was the right house. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, it's you. Yes, it is I, Digby O'Dell, the friendly undertaker. <laughs> oh, hello, Digger. I was passing by and I saw a candle burning, so naturally I rushed right in. <laughs> but yeah, we, we were talking and suddenly everything went black. It can happen to anyone, believe me. <laughs> hey, Monaghan, you remember Digger O'Dell from Brooklyn? Yeah, huh? sure I do. Hi, O'Dell. Greetings, Monaghan. You're looking fine. Very natural. <laughs> Visiting, I presume. Well, as a matter of fact, Adele, the wife and I are thinking of making California a permanent home. I know so many who have done that. <laughs> Continue, Monaghan. Well, we, we're just kind of looking over the ground. I'll be glad to help you if you care to go into it deeper. <laughs> I dabble in real estate, you see. Digger, uh, can I see you a minute uh, out on the porch? Yes, of course. Excuse me all. Well, Riley. Digger, what am I going to do? I got to give him supper. Can I help? Is the table laid out? <laughs> uh, we got no lights. I, I couldn't pay the bill. I got to save my face. Why? <laughs> For Peg's sake, she's humiliated. I can't let Monaghan know that Peg married a washout. Eureka, I have it. Take them to a fine restaurant. Splurge on a luxurious dinner. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll splurge on a... Lu but all I got is $5. Oh, I'm flat myself, Riley. 
or I'd be happy to carry you. Uh, wait a minute. Junior's piggy bank. Ain't that a fine boy I got, Digger? He's going to save my life. In that case, you won't need me. Well, cheerio. I'd better be shoveling off. So long, Digger. I, uh, I got a swell idea, folks. Oh, that's fine. Let's all go out for supper. Huh? Come on, Monahan. I'm taking everybody to Luigi's Grotto. Well, oh, that sounds boy. all right. Oh, just a second. Junior, Papa wants to talk to you alone. Well, there's the place, folks. Luigi's Grotto. May not look like much, but wait till you taste those cheeseburgers. Uh, well, wait a minute, Riley. That place isn't open. It ain't open. There's a sign in the window. Closed by order of the Board of Health. <laughs> oh, well, that's, that's the wrong place. We, we, oh, there's the place I met across the street. That's... Oh, La Parisienne, yeah. French food, huh? Well, let's get going. All right. Uh, careful crossing the street, folks. Babs, you and you do Jr. stay with Monaghan. I will, Mother. <sighs> Riley, that restaurant, it looks so expensive. Well, I'll show that Monaghan I ain't no piker. <laughs> but I thought all you had was $5. And eight dollars in Junior's piggy bank, see? The Monaghan's candy, 13 bucks. But what about us? Us? Well, we ain't hungry. Are we? No, dear. Thanks, Peg. Say, it's a real smart place, Riley. You eat here much? Well, you know me, nothing but the best. Let's all sit here in the back where we can, uh, <clears throat> where we can face the music. I'll order for everybody, huh? Riley, uh, Riley, these prices. Just look at the menu. Uh, oh, oysters de la Paris, three dollars. Lobster francaisi, four dollars. Oh. Uh, you wish to order, monsieur? Oh, no, but I guess we gotta. Uh, <clears throat> we'll have the complete Chinese dinner. Chinese? I am sorry, monsieur. We are French. Oh, too bad. Well, let's go, huh? Riley! Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did you find something you like, Peg? Yeah? Well, I'm on a diet. I'll just have a sandwich. Uh, watercress, Babs, you? Uh, I'll have the same, Mother. Uh, that's $2. Don't worry, dear. The Monahans couldn't possibly eat $11. No. You know, I'm not very hungry. Uh, oh, you're safe. Yeah. Uh, just give me a broiled lobster, waiter. Oh, that's six bucks shot. And one for my wife. $10, and I only have 13 Yo, a vegetable come with that? Oui, oui monsieur. Ten bucks. And one order of asparagus. Eleven bucks. Yeah, make that two. Twelve bucks. And uh, one French pastry. Twelve eighty. Uh, twelve eighty. Twelve eighty. And that's all. <sighs> we still got twenty cents for a tip. Oh, Yo, two cups of coffee. Bingo. <laughs> well, there they go, Pop. Boy, what a swell car Mr. Monahan's got. I wish we had a... Shut up, Junior. What did I say? Oh. Ah, who wants a car? Sit down, Riley. Let's sit here on the porch, just you and I. Huh? Yeah. Well, well, go on, say it, Peg. Go on, say what you're thinking. What am I thinking? That you should have married him, Monahan. Oh, Chester Riley, how can you even think such a thing? Huh. Just because things went wrong tonight... You... Tonight? Things have been going wrong since the day we were married. For 20 years I've been asleep, but tonight on the floor of that restaurant I woke up. On the floor of the restaurant? Well, when you all went to the car, I had to bust Junior's piggy bank, didn't I? Well, it woke me up. Now, don't get excited, Tonight Riley. I took a good look at myself, and believe me, it was horrible. Well, I'm satisfied with you just the way you are. Yeah, well, I'm not. If Monaghan can make good, so can I. You'll see... You won't be ashamed of me. I'm not ashamed of you, darling. Believe me, I'm perfectly happy. Well, don't worry. I'm going to change all that. <laughs> in a few moments, we'll bring you Act Two of The Life of Riley. Who's in the spotlight tonight, Libby? Someone who certainly belongs there, Mr. Keeley. Joan Crawford. In Warner Brothers' The Damn Don't Cry, she's terrific. Yes, Joan, as an international glamour queen, looks and acts the part. It's melodrama with a capital M. With emphasis on the feminine angle. I guess Joan meets as many emotional situations as most women do in a lifetime. She has a chance to put over some romantic drama, too. David Bryan, her gangster boss, is determined to make her a great lady. And some of her best scenes show Joan's strenuous efforts to oblige. <laughs> well, Joan enjoyed that chance to make us laugh. And the wardrobe she wears in the damn don't cry. 
Feminine fans will sigh over that, Mr. Keeley. There's everything from glittering evening gowns to the latest in swimsuits. Well, she's the girl to wear beautiful clothes. Joan has real style and distinction. Real beauty, too. She's the cameraman's joy with her finely cut features and fresh, lovely skin. You can't help noticing that lovely luxe complexion of hers in the close-ups. Yes, John. Joan Crawford has been a luxe girl for years. She never skips her daily luxe soap facials. A famous screen star can't take chances with complexion beauty. Those luxe soap facials are quick and easy, but they really work. Skin specialists have proved it. In recent tests, actually three out of four complexions improved in a short time. Smart women everywhere use this gentle white soap. They smooth the creamy lather in well, rinse, pat with a soft towel to dry. That rich, active lather really does things for the skin. Leaves it softer, smoother, looking so fresh. Yes, and here's a tip for any woman who wants a lovelier complexion. Next time you shop, stock up on Hollywood's own beauty soap. Discover for yourself why nine out of ten screen stars use fragrant white Lux toilet soap. Now, our producer, Mr. William Keeley. Act two of The Life of Riley, starring William Bendix as Riley, Rosemary DeCamp as Peg, Richard Long as Jeff, and Meg Randall as Babs. Chester A. Riley is through being a failure. Come what may, he's determined to be a success. And as part of his campaign, Riley's become chairman of the factory's annual picnic at the beach. Hiya, Mom. Hiya, Babs. Here, have an oyster. A what? Oysters. Pops over there at the barbecue. He's roasting thousands of them. Oh, poor Daddy. He's working so hard. For six weeks, he hasn't stopped. Overtime every night, and now this picnic. Hey, Mom, you ought to see the swell speedboat down there at the dock. Speedboat? And you know whose it is? Bert Stevenson. Oh, the boss's son. Hey, Babs, why don't you start going out with Bert Stevenson again? He used to go out with him all the time. Will you talk about something else? Bert Stevenson bores me. Well, Jeff Taylor bores me. Oh, Mother. She's in love with the landlady's nephew. Jeff Taylor, M.D. Mopey Dope. Mother, may I slap him? No, dear, you might loosen his braces. How you doing, Bert? Well, that's some speedboat. Norman. Glad to see me, kid. Well, wh what are you doing here? Looking for you. Don't tell me I'm not welcome here. Now, listen, my father's around here someplace. If he finds out I'm in a jam... You're in no jam, but all you gotta do is pay the 23 grand you owe us. Of course, if you don't pay... But I've told you, I'm broke. Betting on racehorses is a very expensive hobby. How about that dough your grandfather left you? It's in a trust fund, you know that. I can't collect until I get married. When is the wedding? Quit your kidding, will you, Norman? Who am I gonna marry? The will says it's got to be someone my father okays. That's your problem, see? And if I was you, I'd start working on it right away. Have fun, kid. Daddy? Daddy, is that you? <coughs> Who is it? Uh, who's it, Babsy? Well, come out of the smoke. <coughs> Say, that's quite a barbecue <coughs> there. <coughs> Where are you? <coughs> oh, oh, hello, Babsy. <coughs> I'm getting barbecued lungs. <coughs> Well, you better take it easy for a while. No, I, I can't, Babs. I got to keep the folks happy. I got to become the most popular guy in the plant. Besides that, Your I... boss. Here he comes, Daddy. Oh. Well, hello there, Riley. Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Stevenson. Well, well, and Barbara. My, what a pretty young lady you've grown into. Well, thank you. Now, why doesn't my son Bert go around with a girl like you? Oh, uh, have a hamburger, boss? Oh, not with my ulcer. You know, Riley, you're a lucky man. You don't have an ulcer. Oh, well, I can't afford one, boss. Not on my salary. <laughs> <laughs> Very amusing, Riley. Very amusing. You see, boss, I... Huh. Never said a word about how hard I'm working. What an ungrate. Hey, Babs, you busy? Oh, no. But that's Bert, the boss's son. I was just wondering if you'd like to take a ride in the speedboat. Would she? Why, thank you, Bert. I, I just love to. Then why don't you go out with me anymore? Now, you'd think a girl would help her father get ahead at the plant by being nice to the new assistant manager. Well, if you're suggesting that I date any man on that oh, basis... Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, Babs. I guess I shouldn't have said that. Just tell me when I can see you again. Well, look, it's just that we have such different interests, Bert. You like horse racing and nightclubs oh, and Oh, but all I've that... changed. I've, I've quit all that, Babs. On the level. Well, that, that's fine, Bert. Oh, you don't know me anymore. I've settled down. Why, I... I've even been thinking of getting married. Married? Oh, why not? 
The sooner the better. Bert, don't you think we'd better head back to the boat dock? Sure, Bab, sure. Anything you say. That's it, Riley. You just stretch out under the umbrella, dear. You must be worn out. Uh, seven hours I've been frying over that barbecue peg. Hmm. And for what? That Stevenson don't even know I'm alive. Why don't you show him your birth certificate? Oh, hello, Gillis. Where you been? Enjoying the sunshine, pal, while suckers like you do all the work. Yeah, <laughs> sucker is right. The big boss don't appreciate nothing. Look, dear, I've been thinking. If Mr. Stevenson won't come to you, why don't you go to him? That's a waste of time, Peg. Only one way to get ahead. Pull. You may be right, Gillis, but we can still hope. Nah. Nice guys like Riley and me, we're hopeless. Who's hopeless? I'm going to Stevenson right now. I'm through being pushed around. I'm going to demand a promotion, and I won't take no for an answer. Good luck, dear. But, Riley, give me a chance to tell you. Boss, I thought... I've been with you ten years. I seen other guys getting raises and promotions, and I never squawked. Now the time has come for me to get promoted. Calm and I wanna... down, Riley. Calm down. I am going to promote you. Excuses. Always excuses. <laughs> Don't I deserve a break? Starting January 1st, you're a foreman. Okay, Mr. Stevenson, if that's your attitude, okay. From now on, I'm... I'm... I'm foreman? <laughs> Boss, did you say foreman? Starting January 1st. Me? No. Me? No. Oh, thanks, boss. Thanks. I'm the happiest. Hey! Hey! Peg, you should have seen me there on the beach. I knocked Stevenson for a ghoul. You should have seen me the way I talked him into a promotion. Oh, it's just wonderful, darling. Only it isn't for quite a while yet, and anything might happen. Oh, nothing's going to happen. Not this time. I'm on my way to the big door at last. And... Hey, hey, with all the excitement, I forgot to pay Bogle the rent. Do you, do you think she forgot? Mother, oh. um, where's the shampoo? I've looked everywhere. Oh, I'll find it, dear. Uh, meanwhile, you run next door with the rent, will you, Babs? Here. Here's the money for Miss Bogle. Me? Oh, I'd ra... Hmm? Oh. Well, all right. Ah, oh, that's a great girl we got there. You know, Peg, after she's out of college, I'm going to send her to finishing school and really finish her. <laughs> Come in. Good, good evening. Oh, hello. May I see your aunt, please? Well, I, I, I'm sorry, Bab, she's not home. Oh, well, my mother sent me over the rent. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Oh, oh no, I, I was just reading and shaving. Oh, an electric razor. I gave my father one of those for Christmas. He says they're no good. Oh, well, you've got to know how to use them. Here, see, see my face? Yeah, well, it looks very smooth from here. Oh, well, well feel it. Uh, uh, you, you can tell your father. Oh. Oh, well, it is smooth. Huh. It's smooth as mine. Really? Oh, I don't know. Well, feel it. Oh. <laughs> It, it sure is smooth, all right. Uh, Babs. Yes, Jeff? You, you're a very unusual girl. Oh, lots of girls have smooth cheeks. Yeah, but what, what, what I mean is, well, lately I'm finding it very hard to concentrate on my studies. Really? I mean, I mean I've known other girls, but, and they were all right, but I, I, I never felt about them the way I feel about you, and I, I sure is smooth, all right. <laughs> Bad. Would, would you resent it if I... If... Why, Jeff, you just kissed me. Yeah, let, let's do it again. Huh? I think I'd better go home. Yes, maybe you'd better. The rent's paid, Mother, I think... Oh, thank you, dear. Ask Junior about the shampoo. Oh, it's all right, Mother. I'm not really hungry. <laughs> Over Aunt Martha with the rent money. Oh, thanks, dear. Well, I, uh, I bought something while I was downtown. Oh? Oh, it looks like a sign. This house for sale. Oh, not this house, Jeff. The one next door. The Riley's house? 
Oh, but you can't do that. Oh, I'm sure they'll find another place. Oh, but you know this city. They'll be out in the street. Aunt Martha, you can't just... But maybe he'll buy it. Honestly, dear, I need the cash, and I... Oh, well, I guess I better phone and tell Mr. Riley. Maybe General Manager Peg, and then I'll start buying up stock, and Aren't then... you moving a little fast, dear? Ah, you ain't seen nothing yet, Dumplin'. We're through living like this. We may even move out of this house any minute now. <laughs> I'll get it, Dumplin'. Probably Gillis trying to play up to me on account of my promotion. Hello? Now listen to me, baboon face. I ain't gonna... Oh! Oh! Oh, oh Miss Bogle. <laughs> well, good evening, Miss Bogle. Huh? You what? Sell my house? No. But you... No, no, you, you, you can't. My, my house. But you... Peg! Peg! Help! Help! And that's all there is to it, Jeff Daddy can't buy the house Your aunt's asking $1,500 down And, well, Daddy just can't raise the money He's tried everywhere See, if there was only something I could do, Babs Well, it's all right, Jeff It'll work out somehow There's just one thing left Huh? What do you mean? Oh, nothing, Jeff Nothing at all Well, I... I guess I'd better go in I... I love you, Babs. Do you, Jeff? I love you. Goodbye. Goodbye? Hey, wait a minute. The way you just said that, you don't mean goodbye like that. Well, I... I don't know what I mean, Jeff. Riley? Oh, where have you been, dear? It don't matter, Dumplin'. I didn't get the money. Oh, hello, Digger. Greetings, Riley. Guess what, dear? Mr. Odell volunteered to store our furniture till we find a place. Always glad to give my fellow man a lift. I brought some of my employees along. We'll begin in the bedroom, gentlemen, as usual. <laughs> I pride myself these are the fastest six ball bearers in town. Don't worry, dear. Something... Don't will... worry, she says. <laughs> and you, you, my own wife, what are you doing on Sidney Monaghan's chest? What on earth are you talking about? I just saw Monaghan. I went to his hotel. He was in the swimming pool. And there you are, all over his chest. You mean his tattoo? Don't deny it. Sidney loves Peggy. I can read. Riley, Sidney had that tattooed on his chest 20 years ago at Coney Island. I can't help what that big simpleton did. When I married you, you had a mermaid tattooed on your back. At least I had the decency to put your face on it. <laughs> You went to Sydney and you asked him to loan you the $1,500? Yes, and he said no. He said it would bust up our beautiful friendship. Even when I told him I hated him, he still wouldn't loan it to me. <laughs> Step lively, gentlemen. What's he doing? Put that down. Put down my bedroom carpet. Now, now, Riley. Be brave. Put that down and get out before I throw you out. Well, man alive, if you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> oh, that skunk Monahan. Oh, how I wish I had his dough. Never envy anyone. In my profession, we have a Z. The grass is always greener on the other fellow. <laughs> well, cheerio. Come, gentlemen. Come. I ain't washed up yet, Peg. They think they got me cornered like a rat, but I'm one rat that won't be cornered. Riley, lie down now. Try to rest. Nobody's going to throw my family out in the street. I'd rather see you starve. I've got some pride, you know. Gee, Pop, who's starving? No, it's you, Junior. A fine father you got. You're a good father. Well, you're no judge. After all, you've only had one father. A father is supposed to make his family happy. We're happy. We're happy. Well, maybe you're happy, but I'm not. And I'm entitled to a little happiness, too. All I need is $1,500. I got it. I got it, Peg. Oh, why didn't I think of this before? Riley, what are you looking it's for? It's here on the desk. I've seen it here. Peg, I'll kill myself. Pop! <gasps> Where is it? Riley! No! No, Junior, do something, will you? Don't let him get that gun. Gun? I'm not looking for the gun. My insurance policy. Oh, Riley, oh. Here. There, you see? In case of death, the company pays $5,000. We're rich. Our troubles are over. Riley, please, will you listen to me? Well, everybody's got to die sometime. It'll take us a little while to get used to the idea of me being dead, but after that... <laughs> Riley residence, 
Mr. Riley is dead. <laughs> oh, Peg, this is my lucky day. From here on, I'm, I'll be in clover. Riley, you're hysterical. I know you, you love me, Dumplin', and I love you, but don't take it so hard. Be happy. This insurance will fix everything. But they canceled the policy when you missed the last three payments. I know, and if I hadn't sacrificed to make those payments, where would I be today? Where would I... Where... Peg. Peg, where am I? The insurance policy's worthless, dear. Peg. Yes, dear? Peg. What is it, darling? I want to tell you something. Nobody knows this, but I've got to tell somebody. What, dear? I'm a failure. <laughs> Hello? Who? Oh, yeah, just a minute, please. Pop, it's the plant. Bert Stevenson. Bert Stevenson. Bert Stevenson. Peg, I'm fired for taking the day, day off today. I'm fired. You better speak to him, Riley. Yeah. Hello? Bert, well, well, you can't fire me because I quit. What? New job. $150 a week. Oh, Bert. Bert, I, I don't know how to thank you. Yes, Bert, yes, tomorrow. I'm promoted. Peg, I'm promoted. Oh. You're foreman, Pop, already? Foreman? I'm an executive, 150 a week. Darling, I just can't believe it. I can't believe it. No, Peg, don't cry. I can't stand people. <laughs> well, you heard me, Babs. Your father's now coordinator of interplant relations, $150 a week. Happy? Oh, Bert, I, I just don't know how I could ever thank you. Don't try. But uh, how about another date tonight? Oh. Yes, Bert. Of course. Oh, that's fine. Hiya, Blake. Oh, uh, I didn't know you was tied up. Oh, it's all right. I, I'm, I'm just leaving. I'll, uh, I'll see you tonight, Babs. Well, I just promoted Riley. And the dame's grateful, huh? She appreciates what you've done for her, old man. Now, look here, Norman. My father's out of town, and if he gets sore about this... Why should he get sore? Not when you tell him he's getting such a high-type, respectable daughter-in-law. But how do I know Babs will marry me? You still owe us 23,000 bucks. You persuade her, chum. You persuade her. In a few moments, we'll return with Act Three of The Life of Riley. Of our guest tonight, it can be said, hometown girl makes good. For Ms. Leslie Banning, a native of Hollywood, has just signed a contract with Universal International. Congratulations, Leslie. Thank you, Mr. Keeley. You know, it's thrilling to be in pictures at last. Now I can look at them with a professional eye and really appreciate a fine acting job. I'm thinking of the picture I've just seen, Winchester 73. That's an intriguing title. It's really the story of a perfect rifle and the part it plays in a pioneer drama. With the help of that wonderful rifle, Jimmy Stewart triumphs over the villain, played by Stephen McNally, and goes on to win the girl, Shelley Winters. Winchester 73 is Shelley's first western. You know, Jimmy Stewart told me he thinks all actors should make one Western a year. It's good for the morale. Well, morale is what you have to have, Mr. Keeley. The picture was filmed near Tucson, and, well, Shelley Winters rode horseback day after day in the desert heat and dust. Being a Lux girl, I'll bet she took along plenty of her favorite beauty soap. Yes, Mr. Kennedy. You know, she's devoted to that big bath-sized cake. She really looked forward to her Lux soap bath after a day on location. Well, she couldn't have a more luxurious bath soap. It gives such rich, abundant lather. Even in the hardest water. Wonderful, creamy, active lather that leaves you so refreshed. And the perfume is delightful. It leaves a delicate, clinging fragrance on the skin. Yes, for lovelier arms and shoulders, for softer, smoother skin, smart women everywhere use this generous, satin-smooth bath cake. So next time you shop, stock up on Lux Toilet Soap in the big bath size. Find out for yourself why nine out of ten screen stars use fragrant white Lux Toilet Soap for all over Lux loveliness. Thank you, Miss Leslie Banning, for being with us tonight. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.
curtain rises on Act Three of The Life of Riley, starring William Bendix as Riley, Rosemary DeCamp as Peg, Richard Long as Jeff, and Meg Randall as Babs. It's the following evening. Riley has spent a full day at the plant in his new executive capacity. And he's invited two neighbors for dinner. Miss Bogle, the landlady, and Jeff. And now, folks, now that supper's over, I got a little surprise. About uh, buying this house, Miss Bogle, I believe you said 1500 down. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Riley, that money, you robbed a bank. I never left my desk all day. Except once I had to go to see the boss. <laughs> He came back from New York unexpected. He said, Riley, my son Bert told me about your promotion and he couldn't have made a wiser choice. He said, what, Pop? I am quoting the boss for Bolton. And then he said, Chester, you are practically one of the family. And then he gave me the bonus. Bonus? 2,000 smackers. <gasps> Mom, you're crying. It's nothing. I just... I got the best, kindest, bravest husband there ever was. Oh, Peg, you're a lucky woman. <laughs> Gee, Babs, I guess there's never been a happier family. Oh, it's like a dream, Jeff. Just look at them in there. I've never seen Mother so happy, and look at Daddy. Well, he's all set now. His troubles are over. You know, no parents ever made more sacrifices for the children. I wonder how I can ever pay them back. How about giving them a present? Three or four grandchildren? Oh, Jeff. You will marry me, Babs. Of course I will. Oh, it sure is smooth, all right. We'll be married just as soon as you graduate from medical school. Well, that's only six years. I can hardly wait. Oh, Babs! Babs! Hey, Babs! Bert! Say, may I see you a minute? Why, yes, of course. You better wait here, Jeff. Yeah, but who is he? He's Bert Stevens and the boss's son. I'm sorry to surprise you like this, Babs, but I had to see you right away. Well, won't you come in? Well, I, I don't want your father to know. My father? Well, it's about his promotion. There's liable to be some trouble. Oh, no. Now, now don't get excited. Uh, let's take a ride someplace where we can talk, huh? Well, if you think it's necessary. It's necessary, Babs. Oh, all alone on the porch, Jeff, huh? Where's Babs? Oh, uh, well, she'll, she'll be back in a little while, Mr. Riley. <laughs> Left your flat, huh? <laughs> well, that's the way it is with love. You two will have plenty of quarrels before you finally split up. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, kid. Let's get in the house, huh? Defend yourself, Riley. I was just telling Miss Bogle how you proposed to me. Oh, yeah. yeah the funny thing, Miss Bogle, Peg almost married Sidney Monaghan. Oh, eh? I did not. Oh, boy, was I jealous. <laughs> well, you were in love. Out of my mind. So, all of a sudden, I said, why wait, Chester? You might lose her. So I rushed into her old man and I said, Mr. Barker, I love your daughter and I want to marry her and you're not going to stop me. Ah, now if you want the accurate version of all this... And I'll then be... he said, okay, marry her. He was drunk, you see. He didn't know what he was saying. Oh, Riley. <laughs> That's why I always say when two people are in love, there's only one way to put a stop to it. Get married. <laughs> Mr. Riley, I love Babs and I want to marry her tonight. Well, I'm sorry, son. She's out for a little... <laughs> what did you say? He wants to marry her. Well, you'll do nothing of the kind. You better go home, Jeff. Mr. Riley, I love Babs, and I want to marry her. All right? Uh, uh, well, 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 yes, yes. It's, it's all right with me, son. Now, oh. now, you go back in my room and cool off, huh? We, we will talk it over when Babs gets here, huh? Thank you. You said all right. Well, sure. Just a Riley. Now, Peg. I'm speechless. Well, Peg, I was only trying I'm speechless. Peg, the thing I'm is... absolutely speechless. I know you're speechless, but let me get a word in sideways. <laughs> I'm using psychology. What kind of psychology is that? Well, if I turn him down, he gets sore, see? And Babs gets the idea that I'm trying to run her life. So I say yes to him, and then when Babs gets here, she turns him down. I know Babs. Is that so? My father tried to use psychology on me, but I married you. Well, Babs ain't gonna make the same stupid mistake you did. <laughs> now, calm down, everybody. Just wait till she gets home. That's the whole story, Babs. You're not angry with me, are you? Oh, Bert, how could you possibly tell your father we're going to be married? I had to. That was the only way I could get him to okay your father's promotion. Oh, if my father loses this job, he'll just never get over it. 
Then marry me, Babs. I'll be good to you. I, I, I promise. But I, I don't love you. But don't you see? It'll solve everything for everybody. Well, give me a few minutes, Bert. Please let me try to think. Sure, honey. Sure. <laughs> My nephew's gonna be a doctor, Mr. Riley. I got nothing against his marrying your daughter, but he can't get married until after he starts to practice. Well, he ain't gonna practice on my daughter. She's here. Babs is here. Well, sure. Mother? Daddy? I... Yes, dear? I'm getting married. <laughs> married? She's drunk like your father. Oh. <laughs> Well, I forbid it. Darling, you can't be serious. Well, why not? What's wrong with getting married? You're not getting married. My head's made up. Daddy, don't shout. He'll hear you. He's right out on the porch. He's supposed to be in my room. How did he get out on the porch? Hello, Dad. Hello, Bert. Where's Jeff? I... Dad? <laughs> Dad? Me? I tried to tell you, Daddy, I'm marrying Bert. Well, aren't you going to congratulate me? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Sh sure. Mother. Huh? And, and Grandma. No, no, no. That's the landlady. <laughs> Babs, I thought I heard you, honey. Listen, tell him. Tell him you want to marry you. Marry me. Your, your father said it was all right. Well, I take it back. What? She's marrying him, Jeff. Him? Babs, you don't mean... Jeff, please try to understand and we'll, we'll, we'll always be friends. I don't want to be friends. I want to be married. Oh, Jeff, wait a minute. Wait for me. Well, I don't know what that was all about, Mr. Riley, well, but... it's okay, Bert. They're gone. Oh, good. Then we can tell you all about our plans. Babs and I are going to be married on Sunday. Sunday? Yes, at our place, Mrs. Riley. And after the honeymoon... Just can't believe it. My little baby going on a honeymoon. Honeymoon? Well, uh, in that case, I consent to the marriage. <laughs> Oh, Babs, you look beautiful, darling, just beautiful. Well, isn't it almost time to go downstairs, Mother? No, this time. Babs, now, I promise I wouldn't say this again, but in a few minutes you'll be married, and then it'll be too late. <coughs> Mother, please, I've told you over and over again, I am happy. But and now you and Daddy can get some fun out of life, now that he's a successful success, as he calls it. <laughs> I just hope it doesn't go to his head. Where is he, Mother? Daddy? Oh, he's downstairs, darling, talking to some of Mr. Stevenson's rich friends. Oh, dear, I hope he doesn't go. And uh, this is Mrs. Vandermeer, Mr. Riley. Mrs. Vandermeer, the father of the bride. Oh, charmed. Oh, pardon my glove. Oh, pardon my bare hand. <laughs> uh, would you like to park the body? I'll get you a chair. Hmm? Oh, oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, you interest me, Mr. Riley. Is it true that... That you're an ordinary workman. One would never tell you by yourself off air. Oh, well, I, I didn't have time to buy a new one. I rented it from Dick Rodell. <laughs> well, here's a cozy little group. I see you all know my good friend, Mr. Riley. Yeah, boss. They've been having the pleasure. Mr. Riley's the most efficient and popular man in my organization. My only regret is I didn't make him an executive years ago. Well, thank you, Carl. Thank you. Uh, you seem warm, Mrs. Vandermeer. Would you like a beer? <laughs> oh, no, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Riley, uh, isn't that your friend Gillis over there? G Gillis? Oh, yeah, yeah, excuse me, boss. Gillis! G Gillis! Gillis, you did come. And look who else, Mo and Muley. Well, gee, after the way you fellas have been giving me the cold shoulder, I thought you wasn't going to show, so I... Well, what's the matter? Uh, he's asking for it, Gillis. Well, what did I do? Gillis, talk to me. We're wise to you, Riley. Some foul ball you turn out to be. Okay, I admit I done it. But what did I do? You got promoted, didn't you? You're a phony. So, so that's it. You're jealous because I made good. Oh, made good. You traded your own daughter for a big job, Riley. And don't you deny it. Gillis, you'd think that I would... That my daughter... Oh, no. No, you're, you're kidding. Say you're only kidding. Look at you. You got guilty written all over your face. G-I-L-T-Y, guilty. No. No, wait a minute. So that's what you think of me. Me, your best friend, Gillis. Mr. Riley, huh? the big executive, huh? Nothing to do but draw your pay. What power have you got? I'll tell you, no power. I got no power, huh? Well, you'll see whether I got no power, Mr. Gillis. You're fired. Okay. 
Okay. And our friendship is finished. It's canceled. You and me is all through. Right? Right. And I'm leaving here. Right after the eats. <laughs> no more pals. No more pals. Enemies. You hate me. And I hate you. <gasps> it's a deal. Shake. Shake. Uh, not that I care to interrupt, Mr. Riley, but some fellas over there behind the bush trying Jeff. to sneak. That's around. Jeff. Hey, Je hey, what are you doing here? I want to see Babs, Mr. Riley. Well, not that you're not welcome, but you can't see her now. She's getting married in a few minutes. Listen, you can't. She can't marry him, Mr. Riley. You can't let her. I know, son. I know. You've got a broken heart, but you can paste it up. But she doesn't love him. Listen, it's got something to do with your promotion. That night on the porch... I've what? had enough of this. Everybody saw because a guy gets ahead. Gillis put you up to this. Who's Gillis? Oh, it's all right, Mr. Riley. I won't make any trouble. Well, okay, then. I just want to see Babs make a fool of herself. Well, that's better. Now you're talking sense. Hey, 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 Riley! Sidney Monaghan, my best friend! Sidney, darling! <laughs> Hiya, pal! Thanks for the invitation. Oh, oh well. congratulations, Mr. Riley. I hope your daughter will be very happy. Oh, you bet she will, Mrs. Monaghan. Uh, clever operation, Riley, marrying your kid into all this dough. <laughs> you're set for life. Sidney! You too. You've been talking to Gillis. Who's Gillis? My new job's got nothing to do with Babs getting married. Have you got that? Oh, sure, sure. I get it, pal. He don't believe it. Nobody believes it. Oh, don't mind him, Mr. Riley. He's the last one who should talk. Why, he hasn't worked a day since I married him. But, baby... And he's lost all my money with his idiotic scheme. Oh, Slammy, stop. You know how high-strung I am. Stop or I'll kill myself. When? <laughs> Monaghan, you phony. I should have known. And it was all on account of you that I got successful, you double-crosser. Mr. Burt Stevenson, please. Mr. Burt Stevenson. Uh, who wants him, son? I'm from the railroad office. I've got some train tickets for him. Well, Mr. Stevenson's in the house putting on his trousseau. I'll take it. Uh, if you'll just sign here. Huh? Oh, yeah, okay. There you are. Thanks. At least no one can say that I'm a phony. I still got my pride. Us Riley's married for love. My Babs is crazy about Burt. Let's see. Oh, railroad tickets. <laughs> Mr. Bert Stevenson, bedroom G, car 188. Mrs. Bert Stevenson, bedroom F, car 201. Separate rooms. Oh, that Bert. What a spender. When Peg and me went on our honeymoon, we only had one upper... Oh. Oh, what a revolting development this is. Dear. Nothing, Dumplin', nothing. His bed's all right. I hope so. I don't know. This whole thing's got me. Riley, what? Riley, there's the minister. The ceremony's no, going to no, no, start. No, no. Now be brave, Dumplin'. We all got to go sometime. <laughs> get Babs. Go in the house now and get Babs. Yeah. And Junior, where's Junior? Well, I'll find him, Peg. Now, don't you worry, Junior. Junior! Hey, Pop. Stop. Junior. Don't you know the wedding's ready to start? A fine flower girl you are. <laughs> shh. What do you mean, shh? Come with me. Come with you? Why? A very suspicious character just came in the house, Pop. He says, where's Voight? You and them radio programs. <laughs> no, honest, Pop. He looked like a real criminal. Then he made me show him where Bert's room is. And there it is, right there. Oh, I'm ashamed of you, Junior. That fellow was probably the best man. You heard Coming me, to... Norman. Get out of this room. Best man, Pop? Shut up, Junior. I can't hear. Take it easy, bud. I don't like weddings any more than you do. I'm just here in case you're thinking of changing your mind. Don't worry. I'll marry her. And maybe you'll let me alone. Junior, get Babs. Okay, Pop. But what are you going to do? Uh-oh. Here he comes, Pop. Take Babs downstairs to Jeff. Okay, Pop. Uh, uh, could I have a word with you, bud? Huh? huh? I ain't much on talking, mister. Well, I love to chat. Let's I'm go sorry, in this but room here. Come on. Off me. Here he comes, Mom. Here comes Pop. Down the aisle. But where's Babs? Stop the music! Stop the music! <laughs> I'm calling off the wedding. Anyone who brought presents can have them back. Riley! What's the meaning of this? Have you gone crazy? Oh, I've been crazy, boss. But now I'm myself again. And my little girl ain't marrying nobody she don't love. You don't make sense. And who is this, this character? Bloody nose, black eyes? This? He's Cupid, boss. 
He was going to collect some horse bets from your son, $23,000. He what? Uh, Bert, Bert, come here. Is this true? Well, I... Well, well look, Dad... Then I, it is it was... true, your trust fund. But, no wonder you were in such a hurry to get married. I found out just in time. This mug here insisted on telling me. Riley, can you ever forgive me? I didn't know. Well, uh, it was my own fault. I should have known something was fishy when you promoted me. You ain't that stupid. Well, I was only I'm through to... kidding myself. Trying to be a big shot lost me my friends and almost lost me my Babsy. I still got my pride left. And I got something that money can't buy. I got a wife who stands by me. Riley. And I got a daughter. A daughter who was willing to ruin her life for us. And I got a son who... I got a son who goes around spying on bedrooms, thank heaven. <laughs> and as for being poor, well, we're, we're used to that. You're the richest man I know, Riley. I'm so happy, Riley. I've got my Babsy back. And I'm happy too, Daddy. I got Jeff back. And I'm the happiest of all. Oh, you dear. Hey, you, Riley. I got Gillis back. <laughs> And such is the life of Riley. So wonderfully played by our stars, William Bendix, Rosemary DeCamp, Richard Long, and Meg Randall. Bill, if you don't mind, uh, I'll call you Riley. No, oh, no, that's all right. I'm flattered that a famous director like you thinks I'm really living the part, Bill. <laughs> well, it wasn't exactly that. You see, my name being Bill, too, I thought it might be confusing. Hmm, a wise guy, huh? <laughs> You know, I always thought the life of Riley was supposed to be easy. Well, so it is. I work at the studios ten hours a day, mow the lawn every Saturday, take my paycheck home to the little woman. I'm on a diet to keep my figure. What a revolting development. <laughs> life was never like that in Brooklyn. Well, Dick, I, uh, I wouldn't want this to get around, but I wasn't born in Brooklyn. Not, Not from, from Brooklyn? Brooklyn? Oh. What a revolting development this is. Oh. <laughs> Seriously, Riley, I was intensely shocked to see you at the opening game of the uh, New York, uh, you'll pardon the expression, uh, Giants. Please. I'm a great admirer of them distinguished gentlemen what play for Brooklyn, but they were in Philly. <laughs> Relax, Pop, we're off the air now. Ah, that's my daughter, Babs, that said that. Ain't she clever? Huh? And she's also beautiful with that lovely Lux complexion. Well, it certainly is a Lux complexion, Mr. Keeley. You know, anybody can see that. It's smooth. It sure is smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Riley, we better find out what's going to be playing here next week and get on home. Yeah. Next week, a brand new hit from the current screen. The Lady Takes a Sailor. And we'll have the original stars. Those fine artists, Jane Wyman and Dennis Morgan. It's wonderful ent entertainment for everyone, so I know you'll be on hand for this Warner Brothers screen success. Oh, that's for me and my whole family. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Good night and long life to Riley. Here's a fashion flash from Hollywood. Rosemary DeCamp is matching her stocking seams to her cotton and linen dresses. Lovely nylons in sun-warm beige come with bright red, yellow, and turquoise seams to accent costume colors. Of course, Rosemary sees to it that her stockings get Lux Flakes care, just as all her nice washables do. Like so many screen stars, she insists on gentle Lux because it makes stockings last far longer. Strain tests prove that a strong soap or rubbing with cake soap makes runs come sooner. With Lux Flakes, even sheer nylons last twice as long. Get a box of Lux Flakes tomorrow. Give all your nice washables that lovely Lux look. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Dennis Morgan and Jane Wyman in The Lady Takes a Sailor. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. William Bendix appears through the courtesy of the Life of Riley radio program sponsored by Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer. 
Richard Long can now be seen with Marjorie Maine and Percy Kilbride in Ma and Pa Cattle Go to Town, a Universal International picture. Meg Randall appears through the courtesy of Universal International Pictures, now releasing One Way Street, starring James Mason and Marta Torrin. Join us again next Monday night to hear The Lady Takes a Sailor, starring Jane Wyman and Dennis Morgan. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows over these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.